Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I want to read over summer. So these are the top five books that I are like on the top of my summer TBR because either they've been on my TBR for a while or they're just ones I'm really excited about. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So this should come as no surprise because I've honestly been talking about this series for so long, I feel like, and I feel like you guys are probably sick of me talking about it. Um, but it is the Inspector Gamache series by Louise Penny. There is one, the newest one that came out last year comes out in paperback in June. So I, as of June, I want to be completely caught up with this series. And so I have four more of like these ones and then the new one comes out in June. So I think it is doable to f be caught up with this series by the end of June and that's my goal. And then the new one comes out in August. So I'm really excited about that, but I have honestly been so invested in this series. And I think summer is a good time to kind of binge or catch up on series as well. Um, but basically the premise of this story is that it follows Inspector Gamache who is head of the homicide detective in Quebec and a lot of his murder, a lot of the murders um, involve a small town called Three Pines and it just follows a great ensemble cast of characters. I just have like a sense of home when I'm in this you know fictionalized town of Three Pines and I think there's something really special, special about that and it also kind of is helping with my homesickness like although I live with my family here I'm originally from Canada and all my family is back home in Toronto so I haven't seen them since Christmas of 2019 so I'm like kind of getting homesick and so this one kind of helps me with that because it does take place in Canada and it has some Canadian culture timbits that some people may not know so it reminds me of home and it makes me feel happy and I honestly love this series so much. So this is one that I think is really interesting, particularly the parallels that this time period has with, I guess, like modern times right now. And it is The Orphan Collector by Ella Marie Wiseman. And this is a historical fiction that novel that takes place during the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. So I think as obviously it draws a lot of parallels to the current pandemic right now. And I think it'll be interesting viewing this historical fiction um novel through like through the eyes of you know someone who's lived through a pandemic right now so i think it'll be very interesting just to see the parallels between the spanish flu pandemic and then what's going on now just because it's been used like it's been brought up a lot throughout these past like year and a half now of the covid pandemic and so i think like it's best to just read the little synopsis here because i don't think i could do it justice so in the fall of 1918 13 year old german immigrant pia longs to be far from philadelphia's overcrowded streets and slums and from the anti-german sentiment that um, compelled her father to enlist in the u.s army hoping to prove his loyalty but an even more urgent threat has arrived spanish influenza is spreading throughout the city soon dead and dying and everywhere with no food and at home pia must venture in out in search of supplies leaving her infant twin brothers alone since her baby died days ago um Bernice Groves has been lost in grief and bitterness. If doctors hadn't been so busy tending to hordes of immigrants, perhaps they could have saved her son. When Bernice, Bernice, I think that's how you say it, sees Pia leaving her um, tenement across the way, she is buoyed by a shocking, shocking life-altering decision that leads, to, leads her on a sinister mission to transform the city's orphans and immigrant children into what she feels are true Americans. So as Pia navigates the city's somber neighborhood, she could, um, she cannot know that her brothers won't be home when she returns, and it will be a long and arduous journey to learn what happened, even as Bernice plots to keep the truth hidden at any cost. Only with persistence and the courage to face her own shame and fear will Pia put the pieces together and find the strength to risk everything and see justice at last. I think this brings up a lot of important themes. Not only does it deal with the pandemic, but it also brings into anti-immigrant kind of perspectives, Americanism, all those things that are very relevant now in terms of xenophobia and everything like that. So I think it's interesting how this is basically like 
over a hundred years ago, but it's still we're still dealing with a lot of the issues that are very common now. So I think everything kind of comes full circle in here. So I think that will be very interesting. So this is one that is a series that I have been reading for a couple years now, and this is one that I a book that I got over December. So I finally want to kind of be caught up with the series because I think there's another one, but I like to keep them all in paperback, so I wait until they come out. And it is The Girl from Berlin by Ronald H. Ball. I think this is the fifth book in this series and it follows two people that it, like help investigate crimes that have been committed throughout history that were never brought to justice so it, a lot of them <laughs> take place and revolve around World War II that type of era. So this one I think is interesting. So Catherine and Liam are approached by a friend who asked them to assist their um, great aunt um, that lives in a villa that is going to be like torn down and so this person sends their like leather bound manuscript so that they can learn more about her and they find it hidden pages of a long um, story long suppressed so it says Ada is the daughter of the first violinist and concert master at the prestigious Berlin um, Philharmonic and a gifted violinist in her own right. Her opportunities would seem to be boundless, but she is a Jewish girl in Berlin in the 1930s. As the tides of history turn and Ada and her family become a target, it is Ada's extraordinary talent that carries them from one perilous situation to another. What, beca what becomes of Ada? How could a story? How could Ada's story contain the key to saving? Uh, Gabby's villa which is the ant and so it kind of goes into there and they investigate like ways and so I really love the kind of the cold case cold cases of history aspect that this series targets and I really love the characters in here Catherine and Liam I love them a lot and I love the kind of it's like basically like a legal thriller with a historical spin to it. So if you like something like that, then I highly recommend you check this series out. So this is one that I've seen everywhere on Goodreads and so I'm really excited for it. It sounds really interesting and it is The Good Sister by Hallie Hepworth and I'm super excited to pick this one up. So basically the little tagline here, it says two sisters, one truth, but which one of them must know it? Uh, which one of them knows it. So it says Fern Castle works in her work local library. She has dinner with her twin sister Rose three weeks a night and she avoids crowds, bright lights, and loud noises as much as possible. Fern has a carefully structured life and disrupting her teen can be dot 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 dangerous. <laughs> when Rose discovered that she cannot get pregnant, Fern sees her chance to pay her sister back for everything Rose has done for her. Fern can have a baby for Rose. She just needs to find a father. Simple. Fern's mission will shake the, shake the foundation of the life she has carefully built for herself and stir up dark secrets from the past in this riveting, rich, and shocking story of unexpected love. So like I said, I've heard really great things about this. There's been a lot of hype, so I don't want to build it up too much in my head, but I'm really excited for it. And it's quite short, actually. It's like just over 300 pages. So I think this is going to be a very quick read. And lastly, this is a book that has been on my TBR for the longest and I just haven't gone around to reading it. And it is Dead Wake by Eric Larson. I've loved Eric Larson. I read The Devil in the White City um, it going into grade 10 and that's when I really fell in love with his writing style. So he writes his he writes nonfiction, but he writes it in a way that is almost in a narrative style. So you don't re feel like you're reading a history textbook. You feel like you're actually reading like a story about these people, but he integrates a lot of you know journal entries and things so it's very well researched and he the way he can integrate these different historical references into his like like nonfiction story I think it makes it really well so if you're struggling getting into nonfiction then I highly recommend you check this one out but this is one that I've had on my shelf for years and I've never gotten around to reading it and I think summer is a good time to read nonfiction because I am Although I have a summer class, it ends up, it's over the second week of July, so I have like more time and like brain thought, like brain power to like focus on this. So I think it will be a little bit easier, but this one is about the last crossing of the Listowania, and it talks about the ship that was um, bombed by, or sunk by the Germans during World War One, and about their, I guess probably the people there and all that. I just, I... 
I always love history and I love his way of really getting into the nitty gritty of this, just the stories behind the people that were involved in these very big historical events. And so I'm really excited for this. I don't want to know too much about the synopsis, like what it really focuses on. I know the general history of it, but I want to just kind of go into this not really knowing what to expect that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what's up <laughs> so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what are some of the books that you want to get to this summer and all of that fun stuff so yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time bye guys